Hi. Welcome back to the Headbangers Ball. Right now as guests, longtime friends of the show, as a, at least we'll say that when they're not around, so they can't comment on it. We've got Mike Muir and Robert Trujillo here. And the last time we spoke with you was my birthday show. Well, was, no, 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 my barbecue show. Mm. At, and we were uh, pretty much putting emphasis on suicidal tendencies. Mm. Right now we're gonna talk about infectious screws mm. and suicidal tendencies. Infectious screws have a new record out called Snap Like a Mother, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And you also been playing a couple shows with this. Yeah. Well, yeah. Actually, <laughs> Go ahead. Actually, uh, the record is, is called Brew Family Cycle and uh, was the first record. And in the first two, we introduced the Infectophibians and Sarsipis and all that. We uh, introduced the world to the Groove Family Cycle and their all important story that most people won't understand, which is why it needs to be told. I think for any of the, for the questions in the, in the second video, we'll wonder about the whole family, and then there'll be videos with dolphins that will explain everything, right? No, there, <laughs> actually, I know what you're talking about. Uh, I think sometimes people go out of the way for people not to understand, but that's not really our intention. I think there's a purpose. It, it's a natural thing. Some people can understand, some people shouldn't understand, and I think it's sometimes more important to people that don't, but um, is, there's a way of telling things, and a lot of times the fables are kind of a good way of doing it, because if you just said, this is the purpose, this is the point, then it doesn't get across, and when you get it another way, and like our, our next single is Cousin Randy, and uh, it's interesting how when people get the reaction, you know, before, and they talk about the song, and they, they make their opinion, or yeah, they when you hear a song, on it. you think about what that song yeah. means in your own mm -hmm. head, and, and then they, you see it. They, when they realize what the actual story is, they kind of trip out, because it's a true story and stuff, and they like, whoa, it, ch it changes the thing. It's one thing when, <clears throat> when they think something is just like made for something. So that's what we're kind of doing is telling people's story in a different way. Okay, and we're going to play uh, an Infectious Cruise video in a little bit that introduces the family. And we're going to talk to them when the Headbangers Ball continues, so stick around. Hi, welcome back to the Headbangers Ball. We're here with Infectious Grooves. And uh, we're going to play something from the new Infectious Grooves record in a little bit. Now, when the Infectious Grooves, when you first started doing the Infectious Grooves, was it set up as a side project or was it always going to be a band? Because this is what, the third Infectious Grooves record? Yeah, well, it's always been intended to be a band. I think a lot of times people have to put interpretations on things and stuff. and. They go, well, you can't be in two bands. And then people, the other one is like, well, there's something wrong with the other one. And we kind of put the analogy, it's kind of like if someone, your parents, you know, you're a kid and then they have another kid. It's not that they don't like you. Or it's like, we really messed up with that kid. Let's get another one and maybe we can get it right this time. Um, it's just something that was uh, with Robert before he got in suicidal. It's, it's, he wasn't really into like the heavier kind of music and he'd been doing a lot of stuff more bass oriented. And uh, so when I, I didn't know him before he was in suicidal, he was friends of Rocky. So we got together and we started writing things that are a little bit different and stuff and, and gave us an opportunity to do some other stuff and to give an opportunity for people to hear stuff in a different sense. But it also doesn't give you an opportunity to rest at all because if you're doing suicidal, then infectious. And it's like, when did, do you have downtime? I mean, have you taken any time off? Because it seems like as soon as an infectious grooves record is out, then pretty soon after suicidal, I mean, you guys have been working real actually, hard. Actually, with us, I think that uh, when we have too much free time away from being creative in music, it starts Our lawyer to get, bills go up. Yeah, exactly, you know. <laughs> but, I think that it's a situation where uh, being creative is like kind of a vacation, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Creating music. But on the same token, how long did it take to do this record? This is like, the writing took how many days? You wouldn't believe us if we told you. I mean... I heard it wasn't very long. Yeah, it wasn't very long. Like stuff, three well, days. Three days. Three, you spent three morning. days to write this record. Yeah. Actually, Mike, um, we were out with Metallica, was suicidal. We'd been home one day, and I get a phone call from Mike saying, hey, Robert, you know, I was thinking, because it was a song that we had written, an infectious song we'd written before. Yeah, we didn't put out. It, we didn't put out, but it was, you know, actually, uh, it's called Die Like a Pig on the album. Yeah. The, the music was done, and Mike had said, you know, we should write, you know, a batch of songs kind of in that direction. And I was like, on the phone with the other fellas, um, and about two days after that, we were um, writing the album. Basically, we'd have three hour blocks at the rehearsal. We'd come out with like four or five songs. You know, and uh, the fourth day we're cutting drums, and, and then, uh, uh, then the earthquake, the earthquake happened. Came. We went home, and the yeah. earthquake happened. So we did like Saturday and Sunday we were doing drums, and then Sunday night, um, actually Monday morning, the earthquake hit. 
So that, that would have really kind of screwed things up. Well, when we come back with them, we're going to talk about suicidal tendencies and hockey. But right now, let's play Infectious Grooves. This is Violent and Funky. You just saw Infectious Grooves with Violent and Funky, and Mike Muir and Rob Trujillo are our guests on The Ball Tonight, and we've been speaking about Infectious Grooves. Now I want to talk about suicidal tendencies, because everybody that watches the show knows that uh, I'm a huge suicidal fan. I know a lot of you are, too. And the new suicidal record, which will come out when? June 14th. The day before my birthday. Last year, when did the su suicidal record come out? June 13th. See that, how it works? Mm -hmm. Now, we can tell that this one's definitely going to be a very video and radio friendly record because the first four songs have the F word in the title and then the fifth song has the S word in the title. Right? Yes. So we're just... Were you, were you an angrier guy this time when the record came out? I mean, Infectious seems like kind of like feeling good stuff, and then Suicidal seems like kind of feeling pissed off. No, I think Suicidal feels good. I think there's nothing better than feeling, having confidence to know you really don't give a damn. I could say damn, right? Yeah. Whether people think. I think the biggest problem in the world is people talk about it. They try to use that form. I see people in bands think they got to say something. They don't know what they're talking about. There's a lot of things that are messed up in the world. You can go here and you can go there and there and everyone's pointing up. But the thing is the most messed up is that the majority of the people, probably 99%, if not more, can't look in the mirror and say they like what they see. That's what's really messed up. That ain't the government. That ain't this. That ain't that. That's reality and that's sad. And when you win a band as long as we've been and go around and, and experience things not just in shows, but you see how people are messed up and, and the main contributor is themselves. It's sad. And you get sick of it. Mm -hmm. And we ain't here to make friends. I think it's a situation we have the first song is uh, uh, what you need to friend. And uh, people have a tendency to say a friend is someone. It's like, oh, well, I went to school with them. I know them. Just because you know someone doesn't mean you know them. Knowing them is knowing how they act in situations, knowing the way they'll be, knowing how they deal with things. And a friend is someone when you're messing up is not going to say, don't worry about his bad luck. A friend's going to get in your face and say, you're a punk. And you say, but this happened in my butt. And they go, it happened when you saw what was happening and you let it happen to you. If you want it to happen to you, don't come to me for no sympathy. You want to be that way, you be that way. But that, that ain't about me, you know. It's not about being a punk. And, and people don't know what a punk is. They got little people and they think that's a cool word and stuff. A punk is when you're a spineless little fool and there's too many people like that. And what that's we say... That's how you feel, Mike. That's how don't I feel. Exactly. That's how you hey, feel. That, does it to me all the time. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and anything you want to throw in there, Robert? What about the guys Metallica? You've been, they've been kind of friends? Yeah, we actually... They call uh, you punks, that would be a friend? Huh? No, no, it's, it's a different Everybody's situation. Everybody's like, I want to be Mike's friend. He's going to call him a punk. They're going to come back. Yeah, man, what I happened mean, to your face? It's not a situation. I want to be Mike's friend. I called him a punk. <laughs> no. We're going to be back and talk to these guys, and we're going to see if Robert will get word in edgewise. Hey, right man, he'll do the last section, man. I let him talk, man. <laughs> Soundgarden with Rusty Cage. <laughs> That was Sugar Tooth with Sold My Fortune. Coming up in just a little bit, we have Guar stopping by. And uh, right now we've got Mike and Robert and from Infectious Grooves and Suicidal Tendencies. We were talking about both. Suicidal Tendencies is going out on the road with Metallica, which is probably on the, the biggest yeah. summer show. And you yeah. played with Metallica a long time ago, didn't you? Uh, we did. Last summer we did some dates. Which was a nice and, um, kind of break European. to get young for Europe In Europe people. and stuff, did some stadiums and stuff. So uh, that was quite an experience, yeah. And um, it's an it's, it's experience. Sometimes people put it into the equation of just playing in front of a lot of people. But uh, there's a lot of things out there to learn. All you got to do is open your eyes and watch. And uh, the world's an interesting place. And it gave us a chance to see a lot of things. We've been to Europe many times, but just see how people are in different ways and stuff. And I found myself most of the time just going, OK, OK. <laughs> and, uh, but it was a great opportunity in the sense of the band to be able to play in front of so many people and people that never didn't know who you were and, and uh, where they see you and they see you and for what you are as a band. There's no preconceived notions. Oh, I heard this, I heard that. They Because before way it got to be the point that Suicidal Tendencies couldn't even play any shows. I mean, people didn't even know, but certain venues would say, no, we, well, we don't want yeah. Suicidal Tendencies to play here. I mean, that happened for a while, I know, especially in Southern California. Yeah, and uh, it's, we still haven't really played uh, in the LA area, although we're going to pretty soon, and it'll be very interesting. We're kind of excited about it. This time, don't it. let me find out the day after, okay? Yeah. Let me know a little bit no. before. Now, bring it back close to home just for one second, because <coughs> I know last week we were both at the uh, Madison Square Garden, Stanley Cup, because you know more about hockey than anybody, I've probably anybody I know. So real quick, let's see I know some more hockey. about most things than probably anybody you know. <laughs> well, right now we'll talk about <laughs> no, hockey. That came off wrong, but it's the truth. So we'll talk about gonna, hockey. Yeah. Um, Real quick, I mean, we're talking about game six. OK, 
Okay, Rangers, Vancouver. Mm -hmm. Six games, the Rangers. Rangers. Yeah. Okay. It's Rangers. Now, I guess game six would Some be tonight. Some people panicked. Well, it's probably over by now. But you knew Some it. Some people panicked after the first game. But uh, no, the Rangers have a far superior team. And uh, they proved it. And that's good because we taped the show in New York, and now everybody that's doing the camera say, make Mike look real good. Yeah. It's all Rangers fans. So Thanks for coming by. It'll win it in six. I'm gonna look pretty funny. And we're gonna try to, uh, <laughs> we're gonna try to hook up with you at the Metallica show somehow. Yes. And uh, we'll keep you updated on all the suicidal stuff. Remember, the record comes out Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday, 14. June 13th. The new suicidal record, new infectious record is out in your stores now. And of course, check them out on the road with Metallica. Right now, we've got the latest from Pantera, and speaking of great tours, other than the Metallica and Suicidal and Alice in Chains tour, um, Pantera's on the road this summer with Biohazard and Sepultura. And here's Pantera with Five Minutes Alone.